We have a few pre uh, kind of pre-submitted questions that we'll get to right off the bat. Uh, so one of the key questions I've been asking all of the guests this week is, what is in your survival kit? So, you know, the current situation that we're in, people are taking it in, in a variety of ways. Um, I think some people are looking at it as though it's a situation where we can just work from home and things will ameliorate. And some people like my first guest on Monday, um, you know, very clearly some of his friends are already living in the mountains, have already decided that civilization is going in the wrong direction, it's time to move out. Um, so my question to you is, what's in your survival kit, both uh, mental and physical? So instead of just saying, you know, what's your, what's your kit list? Um, do you have mental tools, mental, uh, you know, a mental kit list, a mental kind of checklist? Uh, what's in your, even your resource survival kit? So what's your family or your team or your resource plan? So I know it's a bit of a, a larger question, but I'm looking forward to what you, what your, what your thoughts are on that. So broadly speaking, um, there, there are four things. Um, one of them is the tent routine, which has been the, the topic of uh, a series of blogs that I've been uh, putting out with help from my team. Um, so so we, we can probably tackle that as a separate item. Okay. Um, one is a, a PACE plan, which stands for Primary Alternate Contingency and Emergency. And um, uh, I'll share a, a, a screenshot with you to, to show you what that looks like um, from my, uh, my family's perspective. Uh, one is, uh, is a balanced approach to body, mind, heart, and soul, and I, and I, I can talk about that uh, in more detail. Um, but even pre-COVID, I always have a rucksack that's packed. And, and so it's, it's an 80-liter rucksack. I, I do a lot of backpacking now. That's, uh, in the winter, I'm cross-country skiing, uh, and, and in the summer, I'm, I'm, I'm camping overnight. Um, and, and so, you know, I could survive with what's in that rucksack, at least from a three season perspective um, for, you know, for a week or so, if, if we needed to really, um, you know, move quickly. Um, but I don't think what's in my rucksack is, is uh, the most valuable thing that I can share with you um, tonight. Uh, so in terms of body, mind, heart, and soul, if, if, you, if you think about a four-legged table, right, any, any four-legged table, and most tables, right, the, the legs are of equal length, and maybe they can be adjusted a little bit based on, you know, an uneven floor, but they're of equal length. If you equate that to your, your humanity, right, so one leg is your body, one leg is your mind, one leg is your heart, one leg is your soul, and so that's physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. Hmm. If you don't attend to every aspect of your humanity, each one of those legs, if one of those legs is short or missing, well, your table will still stand until the right amount of pressure is put on the right part of the table. And then that table will tip over or fall. So think of that pressure as stress. Think of it as crisis or chaos. And, and so if you don't develop good physical fitness, and there's all sorts of elements of physical fitness. In fact, it has a table of its own, right? Sleep, nutrition, hydration, and, um, and exercise, right? So, you know, the analogy can, can, can propagate. So I try to stay in reasonable shape. Um, from a mental perspective, I try to read a book a month. Or, or more um, from from an emotional perspective well it, some have joked that I'm emotionally efficient um, meaning I, I don't have emotions uh, now my children would say I smile as much as Batman um, so so they're funny that way I, I would say uh, you know that's been an area that I've had to work on is certainly the expression of, of those emotions and from a spiritual perspective um, that can be religion. I'm not a religious man. Uh, so to me, that is, you know, what you believe, you know, what is your purpose? And, you know, as Viktor Frankl said, uh, and, and so Viktor Frankl was an Austrian Jew. He was put into a concentration camp in World War II. And then he went on to write a book called um, Man's Search for Meaning. You know, and he said, if a person has a very strong why, they can withstand just about any how. 
And, and so, you know, if you have a purpose in life, then, then you can get through just about any crisis because there's something worth living for, something worth fighting for. So, so that, that table is, is, is my approach. And, and I think um, that is far more valuable than anything I would have physically in my rucksack. Um, and, and next, from, from my family's perspective, and, and here I'll share my screen with you. Just give me a sec. So, so let me know if you can see um, that picture. Is that coming up? That's right. Okay, so, so what you see there, and um, for those of you on my team, um, I've actually gone out and, and purchased a... Uh, a whiteboard book that I can carry around with me. And they'll find that funny because I'm always, I'm always doing whiteboard drawings, um, typically in, in illegible writing or hieroglyphics that only Anthony Robb can, can uh, <laughs> understand and transcribe. But what you see there are, um, is my PACE plan here at home. And, and PACE, I don't know if it came from the military first or if it came from um, survival, um, but it stands for, uh, primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. And so in the military, um, we'll often talk about our communications plan in terms of pace. So your primary may be uh, your radio, your alternate may be um, uh, a cell phone, uh, your contingency may be, I don't know, HF, and emergency may be a sat phone, right? That's, that's in Kandahar, that's kind of what we had. But you can apply that to much more than just communications. And so, you know, here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got 18 different categories. Uh, and, and no doubt there are more. I, I came up with this last night as, a, as an illustrative example. But in terms of shelter, our primary shelter for the family is our home. Um, if something were to happen to this house, we would stay immediately with a relative. If something were to happen um, more broadly to the neighborhood or to the city, well, I mean, I have tents. Um, or an emergency, we could live out of our truck. Okay. Um, in terms of water, uh, I'll just go through a couple of these. Well, tap water, and then I have 40 liters of bottled water, and then I have a filtration system that I have in my rucksack. Um, and then we would probably boil it. And so the easiest is always the primary and the most difficult is typically the emergency in terms of the use of, of whatever that is. And so I, I broke them down into you know, very um, you know, typical categories for shelter, water, food, cooking, heat, sanitation, electricity, communications, laundry, Hygiene, sorry, hygiene, transportation, fire, first aid, light, uh, PT stands for physical fitness, money, so, you know, credit card, bank card, but what happens if the internet goes down? Well, you've got cash, and, and I keep Canadian and American. Um, you know, what's the fire escape? Uh, it, it, you know, data, that last one in the bottom right has to do more with my company. Um, and so I'm a Google user, Google stores my data, but I'm also, I have a separate backup. I also have external hard drives where you can print stuff out. So these are just examples of, 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 uh, of ways to think about how do you build in redundancy into what you do? And, and redundancy is, um, uh, you know, one of the six uh, biological, elements of resilience um, and uh, there's a there's some interest there's a TED talk and some interesting articles by a Martin Reese um, and he, he's out of Boston uh, how to build a business that lasts 100 years and, and he and he bases it all on um, on, on biological uh, you know how any um, species that's been resilient you know manages to, to last for thousands hundreds of thousands millions of years uh, and so redundancy um, is, is one of them. 